Growing grass from seed is something that can be very challenging and near impossible if not done properly. In this video, I'm going to show you the steps I've taken to successfully grow grass from seed that looks like this. For cool season grass like I have near Chicago, there's two ideal times to grow grass from seed. The best time would be in the fall because the soil temperatures are still warm and you don't have the same weed pressure in all the different seeds that are flying through the air that can make contact with your soil like we do in the spring. The springtime, however, can also be a time where you can successfully seed, and I'm going to be seeding this spring in some areas that I have where we used to have trees, and now we have big cutouts where there's just dirt. So when you're seeding in the spring, a couple things to consider. One is you're fighting time. You're either trying to wait long enough for the soil temperatures to come up because you want soil temperatures at least 50 degrees to ideally about 65 degrees. That's when that cool season grass is gonna germinate at its best. You're also fighting time in the fact that those warm, dry months of the summer are coming and a brand new grass plant struggles with those if it doesn't have a solid root system. So you wanna build up that grass, you want it to germinate, and you want it to get some nice deep roots before it goes into the stress of summertime. So while it's not ideal to seed in the spring, you can still have really good results if you follow these steps. If you're seeding a large area like I am, I highly recommend you take the time to get the soil just the way you want it before you put your seed down. So I had to bring in some topsoil, I had to get rid of the old stump and the tree roots and it took a lot of time to do all those things, but now that it's done, I've got it just the way I want it and it's that nice level smooth surface that I'm looking for so I can grow my grass and be able to cut it with the Toro Greens Master 1000 and keep it at those short heights of cut just like a golf course. If you're not looking for a golf course look, that's okay, but still make sure you take the time to get rid of those rocks or mulch or anything else that might be in your grass. So get rid of those things. If you don't, that seed's not gonna have a good opportunity to get down into the soil and grow. If you're thinking about seeding, whether it be in the spring or any time for that matter, it's important to think about whether or not you've put down any pre-emergent or any weed killers recently because those things can prevent your good grass from germinating. So if you put down prodiamine, or you put down Scott's halts or something else that's going to prevent crabgrass seeds from germinating, realize it's also going to keep your good grass seed from germinating as well. So don't make that mistake and throw money down the drain by trying to get grass seed to grow when you've already got that barrier that's going to protect your lawn and protect the soil from things germinating. Obviously, when you're going to be seeding, something that's going to be important is the type of seed that you choose. For cool season grass like I have, there's three main types of grass that you're going to choose from. Kentucky bluegrass, perennial ryegrass, and tall fescue. Each of those have their pros and cons. Kentucky bluegrass is beautiful, it spreads, it's nice and dark green, but one drawback to that is the germination time. It takes about 10 to 21 days for that to germinate, so you need to keep that seed wet for a long period of time. Perennial ryegrass is a beautiful grass that I really like, and that's what I'm choosing to seed with this spring. I'm going with Baron Brug RPR. It's regenerating perennial ryegrass, and something that's really cool about that is it spreads like a Kentucky bluegrass. It's got that nice dark green leaf like a Kentucky bluegrass, and it also spreads just like that does. The germination time on perennial ryegrass is anywhere from four days to 14 days. So if you have ideal temperatures, you keep that soil nice and moist, you can get perennial ryegrass to come up in just a few days, which is pretty awesome. The last type is tall fescue, and tall fescue, again, germinates very quickly. You can get that to come up in about four days to about 10 days, typically, is the germination time for tall fescue. Once you've chosen your grass seed that you're going to use, there's going to be a recommendation on the bag of how much grass seed you should use per the given area that you're going to be seeding. And one thing I would recommend is follow that, and if you don't know the area that you have, just guess and do your best, but don't overdo it. If you dump down a ton of grass seed, it doesn't mean your grass is going to be thicker. It just means those grass seeds are going to compete with each other and you're going to end up wasting some money on that seed that you put down. So you want to have a nice even distribution, but it does not need to be completely covered with grass seed. 
Any starter fertilizer is going to have a high middle number, which is at phosphorus, and that's going to help build up that root development. If you'd like to seed and you also want to have a starter fertilizer that's got that weed preventer in it, Scott's actually has a brand new product that I just saw this year for the first time. And it has the same active ingredient as Tenacity, but it also has that starter fertilizer. So that would be a really great option. If you have not yet put down a pre-emergent, you want to seed, but you also want to prevent that crabgrass. One step that I like to take when I seed that a lot of people don't do is using a root hume like this, Simple Lawn Solutions Root Hume. This is gonna help amend the soil and it's gonna allow the nutrients in the soil to be taken into that grass plant. It's gonna help build up that root system, which is really important when you're planting new grass seeds. So this step is one that not many people do, but it can make a big difference. All right, the seed is down, so the last thing, well, not the last, but one of the last things I'm gonna do is put down some peat moss on top of that. The reason you put down the peat moss is to hold that moisture in to the grass because those seeds of grass, if they dry out and they don't shoot a root down into the ground before they dry out, they're toast and you've thrown your money down the drain. So putting peat moss on the top is gonna to help retain that moisture. It's also nice because the peat moss, you can see when it's dried out. When it's moist, it's nice and dark, and when it dries out, you can tell pretty easily. So just by looking out the window in the house, I can tell if I have to water this or not. So a thin layer of this peat moss over top of the seed is also gonna help prevent those birds from swooping in and stealing my grass seed. Now that you've followed all the steps, you prepped the soil, you put down your starter fertilizer, you applied your seed evenly, you covered it with that peat moss, this last step is the one where most people fail, and that's keeping that grass seed wet. If your grass seed dries out before it completely germinates, it's toast and you've wasted that money that you spent on that seed. Ideally, you wanna water your seed two to three times a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and then probably once in the late afternoon, depending on your temperatures. If it's not ideal for you to be around the house or it's not possible for you to be out there watering all the time, then there's a product that you can use that's gonna cut your watering in half. It's called hydrotain. And what this stuff does is it pulls humidity out of the air and brings it down into the soil. When I first heard about this, I was skeptical and I don't just put anything on my lawn. So I tested it out on our house plants and I put it in all of our house plants before we went on vacation. We left for a week and when we got back, all of our plants still had moisture in the soil and they all looked great. So I was sold and that's what I'm using on my seeding project because I'm gone the majority of the day and I can't be here to water all the time. But that hydrotain I've used in the past, it's allowed me to have that seed germinate, keep it nice and moist until you have that thick, green, beautiful grass. So best of luck to you on your seeding. If you follow these steps, you're going to give yourself the best opportunity to have a thick, green, beautiful lawn. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.